What's up my YouTube family? And I'm excited about Love Month. Love Month, we took four movies that many of you, all, I'm sure you've seen it. Love Jones, Queen, and what? Slam! Jumping a broom. And then we took a series that many of us watch on HBO called Insecure. We're going to take these movies and then refer them back to the scriptures. It's going to be amazing. And I want you to be a part of it. Spread the word to be a part of this YouTube channel for Love Month. Why? Because I love you. So we're doing this series on the love stories of Pastor Jamone and Dr. Connor and I have done. That we've gone through some movies and we prayed for revelation. Everybody say, pray for a revelation. Which means that you got to find a way, look at a situation and ask God, can I see you in this somewhere? And there was a movie out that came out in 2011 called um, Jump the Broom. And it was actually produced by Tracy Edmonds and Bishop T.D. Jakes. As a matter of fact, he's in the movie. In the movie, two families come together. And from the outside, it looks one way. But these two families are about to come together and two worlds are about to collide. They do something in their ceremony called jumping the broom. And for many of you all might be young, you might not know the history of that. And in America, they're trying to cancel your history. So you must do your own research to know where you came from. And in America, when there was slavery in the land, it was not legal for slaves to marry because they could easily take your kids, take your, your, um, your husband. So the slaves came up with a tradition called jumping the broom. That means that regardless of what's going on this side, I'm in covenant with you and to jump to the other side. For many of you all, God is telling you to be careful with who you grab hands with. <laughs> you really need to see what's going on. Because in the movie, when you meet the girl, she's, you know, just polished. Speaks well. Her and her family speak different languages. And it looks like they all that have. But then when you get to the root of that thing, that thing is a hot mess. Now, the man, the groom, he's well-spoken, but when you meet his family, mm -mm, it's kind of hood. So two imperfect people jump the broom and decide we're going to do life together. And if you study the scripture, I'm going to show you this. If you study the scripture, you could find out what God always refers to himself as the groom and his people as the bride. Let's talk. In Isaiah 54, he's the groom. In Ezekiel 16, he's the groom. In Jeremiah 31, he's the groom. Let me show you a scripture. In Matthew, when Jesus speaks the parable, he says, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took their lamps and did what? Went out to meet the bridegroom. We enter into covenant to God, and he see we not right. But he still grab our hand. And, and some of y'all, you need to know, he saw your meanness. He saw your trifling ways. He saw your secret, but he still reached for you and did what? Which means that the details of your life didn't stop you. He was into the details even when he grabs your hand. And how many of y'all know your details are not that squeaky clean? I need you to make sure you're not sitting next to a hypocrite. I need you to make sure that you're sitting in the honest section. You might be dressed good. Your hair might be laid. Everything might be look good. But if we get to the details of your background and everything that you've been through, the only way that we would know what you've been through or what you're going through is if you told us. But you can't hide nothing from God. He still reached for you and still keep loving on you. Let your neighbor say, he's all in the details. 12 years ago, this young man came and he sang for us. And 
I need you to pay attention to the words of this song because it's called Details. And it's Jonathan McReynolds. And I need you, I'm, I, his pen is crazy, as Pastor Jamon say. I want you to pay attention to the words and know that God is into the small print stuff. And in spite of that, he still loves you. And everything you've gone through, he's still in the detail. Let's go. First off, what's up, Lula? I miss y'all. <laughs> Lord, it really blows my mind. I see your hands on my life in the simplest things. And nothing really goes unplanned. And nothing's really happenstance. When it comes to me, I can see you in the ordinary places. I hear you in the little conversations. You give a meaning when there ain't none. Mm -hmm. So I want you in my routine, the sip of cold, mundane, everyday things. Mm -hmm. Cause I know you make miracles every second and every minute. I want you in it, doing what I Just know you want it in every detail. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I kind of think it's wild. The diamonds and the stars all shine. How you use the great and small to light my life. So many ways to show me you care And in the fine print you are right there Always busy Making more miracles Every second And every minute I want you in it Doing what only you do Ooh, with every moment Just know you want it in every detail, I know you're intentional about me. Uh, uh, uh. And you're so good, it's too much to mention. But when I pay attention, I see you are working in every second. And every minute, I want you in it, doing what only you do. Ooh, with every moment, just know you want it in every detail, every second, and every minute. I want you in it.
You don't feel that you can't live here. Please live and never be second. Every minute, I want you in doing what only you do. Ooh, with every moment, just know you want it. Come on, thank God for the details. So every second, every moment of your life, he still chooses you. Where other people would reject you, he still say you belong to me. Some of y'all are shouting over houses and cars, and I get it. I need you to keep that praise too. But the fact that he chose me that praise should be louder than anything that you have. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. So today we're going to go to a scripture that you really got to seek God to get revelation in this one. It's a very difficult, it's in the book of Hosea. And I know some of y'all did not even know there was a book in the Bible called Hosea. But it really is. It's spelled H-O-S-E-A. Look it up. But God uses, pay attention to this, a prophet's life. And say, I want to use your life to prove my love. You are going to enter into a covenant relationship that's not going to be perfect. But I'm going to make you enter into it because I need to reveal something to the world. But many of you all, you've entered into some partnerships, some friendships, some fellowships, some relationships. It hasn't been perfect, but God's saying, but can I show up in it? Can I bring light to your dark areas of your life? You're the one that told me yes. When you told me yes, you didn't put any boundaries that I have to stay in. So I'll go into the secret area of your life. I'll go into the area that calls you not to sleep at night. I'll come in the areas that bring you tears. I'll bring in the areas that make it feel like your heart has been shattered. But what they think is dead, I'll bring back to life. Those of you all that believe that he's the author and the finisher of your faith, which means he works everything in between. Anybody can praise him when everything seems to be good, but his glory is revealed when things aren't perfect, but you still got a perfect praise. Come on, let's talk for a minute. And I really need your attention right now. So in the movie, they don't hide. The moment that the family gets together, it is what it is. You can bring the clip up. When, they, when that car pull up to the bride's house, and you know this is about to be on when you see Mike Epps in the front seat. When you see him in the front seat, you know it's about to be something that's about to be amazing. And you can see how Angela Bass is sitting there like, Lord, what are we about to do? And when she get out this car, please keep watching her face. Because some people don't have to say a word, but the shade that is on their face. And some of you all, you are just like her. You can't hide. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me? You can't hide. Look at it. Look, look There it is. Uh huh. That's the same way your eyes go when somebody walk up that hurt you. When somebody walk up that did you wrong, you start looking a certain way and watch me and we can see it we can see it hello look at me and he saw you and still picked you hmm. he saw you can I show you what he told the prophet if you go to Hosea 1 and 2 when the Lord began to speak through the Hosea the Lord said to him listen bro I'm gonna need you to go and you gonna marry a promiscuous woman shut up talking to me. How many of us would have said, instead of saying, yes, Lord, I'm going to say, no, God, we ain't doing all that. Look at here. You're going to marry a promiscuous woman. You're going to have children with her for like an adulterous wife. There's some revelation in that. There's some revelation in that. Because even when you marry her, she going to cheat on you. Hmm. 
<laughs> like an adulterous wife that is in that is laying in the land is guilty of unfaithfulness to the Lord. You watch me, please listen. To me. You're gonna marry this woman, she's not going to stop cheating on you, but you're gonna have to stay right where you are. Come on here. You're going to even have three children by her. If you read the scripture, she actually has three children. Scholars believe, please listen to this, that two out of the three kids are not even his, which means you're going to have to raise and feed and clothe something that you didn't even birth. Now, look at here. Look at here. Some of y'all are already shaking your head. This is where me and God ain't going. But what if he treated you like that? What if he saw that you didn't keep your promise? What if he saw you putting somebody in the seat that he's only supposed to sit in? What if he realized that you call people before you call him? What if he realized that before you tell him thank you, you always start complaining. But in spite of what he see, he still keep blessing you. And some of y'all you need to hear me. This is the wrong trying to try to cover up. No, he see your secret area. He see your weakness. He see what you do when ain't nobody looking at you, but he still keeps standing by the doorpost of your house and won't let nothing come near your house. He keep loving on you. He keep providing for you. Can I tell you something? He even cover your mess to make sure that the public don't see it. And some of y'all got the audacity to sit here like you better than anybody. Had it not been for the love of God, you would have been dead years ago you would have been exposed years ago his blood covered you he even went behind the scene and cleaned up your mess to make sure that you couldn't get caught and found guilty now watch me anybody can praise God when you're doing good but those of you that know that he went to the darkest areas of your life walk through your mud walk through your pain walk through your sin walk over your fornication your adultery walk through your lust walk through your Line, walk through your triflingness, walk through your meanness, walk through your being stubborn, but still put his hands on your life. If I were you, I would clap my hands and give God a praise. And this is the killer. This is the killer. Look at me. I didn't choose him. I didn't wake up one day and say, hey, I think I'm going to give you a chance. No. <laughs> Let me show you how much he loves your crazy self. In John 15 and 6, he said, you did not choose me. But I looked at you and I saw everything about you. I saw the errors that anybody else would have held you guilty. But I still put my hands on you. I didn't just choose you and appointed you. So that you make my go, watch me, and you're going to bring forth some things that you never thought that you would be able to bring up. You're going to go places you never thought that you would be able to go. You're going to do some things that nobody thought that you would be able to do. Do you not understand how much favor and how much love God has for you? How dare you come in his house, sit there like you're doing him a favor when he... Everybody that's grateful, do me a favor, lift your hands, close your eyes, and have a moment. Just have a moment. Just have a moment. Just have a moment. I even see you when you won't come to my house. I even see you when you hold back your praise. I even see you when you magnify the bad but won't give me glory for the good. But I keep on waking you up every morning. I keep getting you up out the bed. I still give you the activities of your limbs. Anybody else would have had a nervous breakdown, but I covered your mind. I make sure that you didn't snap out. How dare you sit here talking about, I don't feel good. Let me tell you something. If you fought to get in the building, you might as well, I will enter into his gates. Come on, y'all. I need you to turn around and tell three people, oh, how he loves me. How he loves! Shh. 
should have been dead and gone. Everybody that knows that God keeps giving you another chance and another chance and another chance and another chance. Come on, look at somebody and say, oh, how he loves me. Some of y'all should have added something with my hard head itself, with my trifling self, with my... But he still grabbed your hand and... But he still grabbed your hand and... And then... You gotta get this. Just because you accepted him does not mean that you've been living perfect. This is when it's gonna get real quiet now. This is when the religious people don't say nothing here. Because you want us to think that you'd be sipping tea with Jesus, please. <laughs> that is not tea, I smell, okay? <laughs> and regardless of how many times you mess up, he keeps, oh my God, he keeps wiping your slate clean, keep forgiving you. If you study the movie, at one point you find out that who the girl thinks is her mother and her father is not her mother and her father. His mother was a, just, just let it out. Say, that ain't none of your mama. You got family secrets. She turned to look at the, the man and the woman that raised her and said, is this true? And then there's an the aunt there who just fast. She comes to the rehearsal dinner with a little dress on singing sexual healing. That's what got in trouble the first time. Being, you come to find out that the one who loose is your mama. But handed it over to her sister to cover you. Some of y'all are angry at your parents because they weren't in your life. But God had them to hand you over to somebody to make sure that you become who you're supposed to be. Some of y'all mad that they didn't do what they were supposed to do. But if I were you, I would thank God because had they did it, I wouldn't be where I am right now. All things are working together for you. So now she finds out that who she thought was her aunt is her mother. We had to go through all this pain just to get you here. Bring the clip up. And so finally, the girl is hurt, but she called this woman who she thought was her aunt, and then some mother, and she calls her to a place. Because I can't go forward with unforgiveness. I gotta fix this. I need some answers. Question, can I tell you how much God loves you? He loves you so much that some things he won't let work for you. You didn't hear what I just said. He loves you so much that he won't let people love you that you love because he won't let, watch me, he has to be number one in your life. He loves you so much that he didn't give you the job that you thought that you should have had because he's into the details. This is the line. Can I tell you something? I have read this. I never saw it like I saw it this time. I need you to see this in, 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 in the second chapter. Look what God says to Hosea about his wife. He says, look what I'm going to do. Therefore, I will block her path with thorn bushes. I'm going to block her that she can't get out. I will wall, I will wall her in so that she cannot find her way just to get her back to the one that she jumped with. She will chase after her lover's but not catch them. She will look for them, but not find them. I'm going to break her 
down just to get a yes up out of her. She will say, I will go back to my husband. I might as well go back to God because ain't nothing else working but him. I will go back to my husband at first, but then I was better off than now. And I came to tell some of you all, you've been running around trying to make things work. It's not going to work without God. I don't care how much education you have. I don't care if you're going to get plastic surgery. I don't care if you get the three-piece, the mommy makeover. You could pull it back, lift it up, and push it out. But nothing's going to work for you until you... That was pretty fast. That ain't in my notes, but Holy Ghost gave me that. You spending all this money trying to be recognized. And the Lord keep waving his hand saying, but I'm right here. When you finish doing everything, when you get out the bed with somebody that used you for your body, I'm standing right here and I still got a will over your life. I still got a plan for you. When you finish running from church to church, city to city, I'm still here saying, hey, hey, I'm the one that's going to lead you to everything. It's so easy to get off and not know you are. I ain't gonna say that to me now. I want you to hear me clearly. Every now and then, the Lord say, "I need to, I need to check your spirit. I need to check your spirit, John. Some things I don't like about how I'm feeling about them. Certain things that you keep making a priority. Sometimes, watch me. He'll even check me when it comes to this, because he'll ask me, "Is this more important than me?" Y'all ain't going to say to me, because sometimes you can be so locked up in ministry, you forgot who gave you the ministry. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. This ain't none of your church. This is his church. You more worried about these people when these ain't none of your people. These are his people. You so busy talking to them that you ain't talking to me on how to lead them. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. And every now and then, he checks me to see what's the priority in my life. What's the priority? If I hold it back from you, if I don't let it work the way that it should work, will you stop loving me? Will you still give me glory? And I see some of y'all in the building. I heard the Lord somebody tell you, it's not broken. It's just on hold. And the only thing he waiting on is you to get back on your face. The only thing he waiting on you to do is get your praise back. We in here saying thank you and you standing here like we speaking in another language. You have lost your everlasting mind. God has been too good to you for you not to give him glory. When it's good, you give him glory. When it's bad, you give him glory. When doors are open, you give him glory. When doors are closed, you trust that he closed the door. Those of you that he is your number one, above your spouse, above your kids, above your job, above your name, above your dreams, I need you to lift your hands and just let them know how much you love them. Please obey me. 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 Do you feel a difference? Do you feel a difference? You remember, remember, remember when it, we didn't have to pump you, prime you, and beg you? Remember when you were just on fire for God? Remember when you was excited about coming to the house of God? Remember when you were the one that was in worship? Remember when you were the one that was on your face? He said, watch me, can I show you something? If you go to Revelation, he said, nevertheless, I have something against you, John, because thou has left your first love. Remember, therefore, from whence you have fallen. He said, I need you to repent. I need you to tell me you're sorry. I'm still here for you, but I need you to repent. For do, I need you to go back, and I need you to do your first works all over again. I need you to be excited about me. I watch me, watch me. Some of y'all have gone through a divorce. You, did ne you never got married. To, to, and plan to be divorced, but they're not in your life. So now either that thing can break you, or you can realize he's still God. Some of y'all, your kids have shattered you. It's some of y'all, watch me, your kids didn't handle you right, but, but he's still, 
Some of y'all got some jobs, some careers have not taken off yet. You've done everything within your power. Yep, you sure did. And he kept waiting on you to say, but wait on me. Wait on me. And if you let me go in front of you, I'll level every mountain. I'll bring up every valley. I'll make sure that you don't lack anything. But I can't give it to you unless you give me, let me know that I'm number one in your life. Sometimes I'll just hold it to see what you're gonna, how you're going to act. Sometimes I'll just put it on hold to see if you're still going to give me glory. And there's somebody in the building I need you to repent right now. You ain't been praising God the way you should praise him. You ain't been loving God the way that you should love him. You haven't been lifting your hands the way that you should lift him. Why? Because you've been going through a little something, something. But he told me to tell you, I need you to tell, tell repent. To ask God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now give me my praise back. Give me my thank you back. Give me my zeal back. You trusted man more than you trusted God. I feel like God want to break through in here, please. So you ready? So you ready? Look at me. Look at me. So I know, I know, I know, I know me. Like I know me. I know when I'm sensitive to God. I know when, the, when my fire is lit. And I also can tell when my fire is low. You ain't got to tell me. I know me. We got that kind of relationship. And I know when I'm on and I know when I'm getting off. And sometimes God will check me like, like well, when, when did your fire get lit? My fire was lit when I was in college. I felt like I was, my college years was my Mount of Transfiguration years. Because I didn't have a job, I didn't have no bills. So I, he let me pass every class. And he didn't just let me pass, he let me pass with honor. To let me know this thing, because look, John, you're really not that smart. But because you came to me, I gotta make sure you're the head, not the tail. You're gonna be the lender, you're not gonna be the borrower. You're gonna always be on top and never at the bottom. So he gave me favor that I can't explain. But what were you doing while you were in college? I was, I was, I was calling out to Jesus. I was, I was praying. I would get on my knees sometimes and be like, God, please, whatever you do, don't ever let me lose my passion for you. Where did you get that prayer from? Please listen to me. Because when I was young, I began to see people who had been in church most of their life. I began to see what they call the seasoned saints. I began to see y'all sit with your legs crossed and with your arms folded. And, watch me, and we have to beg you to lift your hands. And I used to look at you and say, God, I never want to be like that. I never want to feel like somebody got to beg me to give you glory. I never want to feel like somebody got to usher me into worship. Watch me. You sit up here looking at the stage to take you into worship. Your worship should have started before you even got to the stage. I don't care who stand on the stage. I got my own praise. And some of y'all, the Lord said, I want your fire back lit. I want you to be on fire for me the way you used to be. I'm going to give you balance. Yep, you're going to be more balanced than you were then. But your fire cannot be compromised. Is there anybody that know that you have some place in God that you're supposed to be? Stand to your feet, everybody. to your feet. Stand to your feet. Can I tell you something? It's a part of me I can't get comfortable. I'm grateful that you're back. But I need his glory more than I need you. I know me. I know me. And I think he set up services like this to come and get me. I think he, I think he let me preach services like this not to preach to you. Welcome to our wedding. Today is going to be a mess. Hear me clearly. When he picked you, he saw your flaws. When he picked you, he knew you weren't perfect. When he picked you, he saw your, your failures before you even failed. 
you like Peter. Before Peter, he said, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. He said, but oh, when you return. I'm going to need you to get up and strengthen your brothers. Hey, 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 it's your get up Sunday. It's your get up Sunday. It's your record breaking year. But you can't break a record without God. You can't break a record without your fire. Look at me, 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 look at me. I mean, I could, I was at one point that I could just go, gee. That one name would take me off every I could be in church and they'll just start singing certain things like, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Here's the line. No name I know. Stop. How in the name of Jesus. Stop! Don't sit. Jesus, power in the name of Jesus, no other name I know. Stop. Watch me. Look at me. In that simple song. Let your neighbor say he's coming to get us today. Touch your neighbor say he wants me to remarry him today. He wants me. Can I tell you how he gonna reach for you? So in the clip when the girl goes ahead and gets she married, you can show it. And while she's getting married, he said, who gave us this woman to be married to this man? And the man and the woman that raised her stood up. The next thing you know, they looked down at the one that gave her away. And say, see, because God's into the details. And even what you thought was an embarrassment is about to be a blessing. to the Lord, thank you for loving me in spite of me. In the third chapter, he said to Hosea, go. Show your love to your wife again. Everybody hear me. I am here show you his love again. Though she is loved by another man and in the mess, he said, love her. God's about to put his love on you in a way that's about to blow your mind. I didn't pick you because you were perfect. I didn't pick you because you had it all together. I picked you because I saw potential. So when I was going to bed last night, I kept seeing this. I kept seeing it, and I didn't know that the thing was going to be in it. But I kept seeing a groom standing, but looking, waiting on the bus. The Lord said, this is him right now. This is the position that he's in. 
waiting on you. Because I found you polluted in your own blood. I saw what you did last night. I saw what you did last week. But guess what? I'm still standing here. And I'm still committed to your dreams that I gave you. I'm still committed to the promise that I put in you. I'm still committed to the, to the life that I promised you. I wait. When everyone else would have walked away. Why are you running from me while I'm waiting on you? Do you know that if you commit to me what you think you've lost? Pull that scripture up in Job. I will restore to you the years. Do you understand what I would do in 2023? What you didn't get in 2019? What you didn't get in 2020? What you didn't get in 2021? What you didn't get in 2022? I will restore to you the years. Pay attention. Pay attention. Lead the scripture up. Lead the scripture up. I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. That the canker worm and the caterpillar and the pummel worm. My great army which I sent among you to devour what you had just so that you could meet me. Make room for me. I will make room for you. I will prepare Everybody reach over and grab 
grab a neighbor by the hand. Squeeze their hand and tell them we're about to jump together. disappointment, every letdown, every mistake you've ever made is behind you. Hear the Lord. I've waited on you. On the second Sunday of February, the month that you call love month, you worried about a valentine when I've been waiting on you to be mine. On the count of three, hold that hand, squeeze it, and say, we're about to jump together. And we're about to fall deeper and deeper and deeper in love with God. He's about to be our number one priority. He's about to bring all the broken pieces together again. He's about to be into the details of my life. I promise you, if you do what I tell you to do, you'll see God. You'll see why you had to go through what you've been through. Why you had to fail the way you failed. Why doors were shut. Why things didn't work out. You'll understand then that all things are working together for your good. On the count of three, I need you to jump on and then say yes, Lord, and give God a praise. One, two, three. Jump. Yes, Lord. You can move it all. Yes, Lord. I, I will make Praise God for loving you. Whatever it is, I don't need the way, Lord. You can move. Get comfortable here, right? I'm here. 
my intercessors start praying. I'm in here for the long haul. Yes. I'm in this long term. No more of this long distance. Hey, Lord, I will be Jonathan. close to you. This is your home now. My heart is your home now. Everybody lift your hands and worship God while he sings. Oh, I'm going to rededicate. From your heart, from your soul. Jesus, Tell them, Jesus. I would be perfect. Mm -mm. Every now and then I let it stick you where it hurt. Not for you to leave me, but to draw you back to me. Get out my face. I came for those that you've never been saved. But oh, you backslider. He did run well. Who did this to me? Your promise is bigger than your mistake. I'm still here, said the Lord. I am married to you. I am married to you. I have covenant with you. And I'll never let you go. But today I call you to make a public display of our connection. I call the sinners and the backsliders. You know? You know better. My hand has been on your life. Do you hear me? The devil desired to sift you and take you out. But I have kept you in the land of the living for such a time as this. Today! You in this building. Get out of your seat. As the groom waits on you to come to the altar. Get out of your seat. 
as you prepare to rededicate your life back to God. Get out of your seat. I don't care if you're an ordained minister. I don't care if you're a licensed prophet. The Lord say, I came to get you today. Get out of your seat and get up here. This is when it's going to be a little tough. Because religious people, you're a little bit more stubborn than the average one. Because you were born and raised in church. But the Lord told me, he's knocking on the door of your heart right now. He's knocking on the door of your heart. You would never be comfortable without God sitting in the seat of authority. You would never be successful with God sitting in that seat. Get out of your seat and get up here like it's a 911. Why am I begging you to live better? Why am I begging you to step out of pain? Why am I begging you to get out of misery? Why am I begging you to get out of depression? If you know that I am talking to you, you should begin to walk right now. The enemy's trying to hold you back, but I bind for intercessors. I need you to pray. I come against every spirit that's been lying to you. I bind every lying spirit, every stubborn spirit. I come against the spirit of pride. I, I rebuke the enemy that has his hand on you and I call you back to your rightful place I call you back to your rightful place your place is with God you do not belong to the world you are do not belong to the world you were hand-picked you were chosen by God get out of your seat right now and move Everybody repeat after me. Jesus. Break every chain. Jesus. That name that is above every name. That name that has power. That name that demons tremble. That name that cast out devils. That name that break every chain. That name that open gates and shake foundations. We call on the name of Jesus. Hold on, Danny. There's somebody that used to be in ministry. There's somebody in here you used to be in ministry. And you off doing your own thing right now. And the Lord say, I hate the, uh, uh, I hear the Lord, I hear the Holy Ghost say, this is what he calls the last call. Which means that you must come before the enemies turn fully, you turn fully over to the enemy. I need you to get out of your seat. You need to hear me. You don't have any more time to waste. You don't have any more time to waste. This is it for you. I count to 10, but you got to get up out of your seat. I need intercessors, every intercessor. If you ever prayed in the Holy Ghost right now, I need you to begin to intercede right now. I'm coming for the church babies. I'm calling for those of y'all that were born and raised in the church. I'm calling for those of y'all. Yep, 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 yep. They were strict for a reason, but now you are older, which means that you're going to be more balanced than what they are. I need you to forget the past and get up here and prepare for your future. Intercessors, I need you to intercede. of that drum for me. Knock on it. That's me knocking. I would not let you sleep. I would not let you become comfortable. I would not let you have success. You'll get it only with me. Your family won't be happy. Your marriage won't work. I'm the one that's going to keep it together. Me a favor. 
follow my lead. Allow me to sit in the seat of the innocent. God, I rebuke the spirit of death. I ask for grace to be extended again. Shield again. Shield, shield, shield. Hear God. For those of y'all that don't know any better, sometimes I pray in tongues. When I pray in tongues, this is not me praying. It's the Holy Ghost praying. So this is not me. It's the Holy Ghost because we don't know what to pray for as we are. But the Spirit maketh intercession. So if you don't mind, can you just give me just a couple of seconds to go in the Spirit? Can I let the Holy Ghost pray rather than not pray? If you can just give me a few minutes. There are five more people here. There are five more people here. Get out of your seat. There are five more people. Let me know when five people hit that altar. Shake right now. Shake them from the foundation. Bind the enemy up. Make every spirit uncomfortable right now. I pray God that you begin to let them feel heat. Hey, shake. Hey, how many I got so far? Intercessors, I need, I need your backup. I need backup. Come on, I got there. Come on. There's another there. I need two more. There are two more people that's supposed to be up here. How much must God love you that he'll stop a whole service to get you in line? How much must God love you that he'll stop a whole service? There are two more people that's supposed to be up here. Get out of your seat. There's one. There's two. There's two. There's two. I need you to release the praise like we just emptied out hell hey. yeah. I need you to praise God like it could have been you I need you to release the praise like God rescued you out of hell. I'll forever be chasing after you. I need everybody to put a chase in your praise. Go, go, go. saved you he picked you I need you to open him up and shout hallelujah yay Time to tell somebody, he got me. He got a good grip on me. Anybody know that the enemy tried to pull you away? But God got a good grip on you. Come on, y'all. Thank God for the grip. Ah! Let's turn them around. We got to... Everybody turn around, we're going to walk you out. Everybody else on your way to your seat, I want you to thank God for keeping power. You were supposed to have a nervous breakdown. You were supposed to lose your mind. You were supposed to die in some mess. But God didn't let the enemy have his way. Come on, I need y'all to go down this aisle. You're going to follow him. But I need those that he's kept down through the years. Yay! Come on, I need you to 
to clap your hands. Everybody that know you was on the enemy's hit list. And the devil really wanted you out of his presence. He wanted you to get away from God, but God didn't let it be so. Some of y'all even went a little far, but he left the 99 and came running after you. He only let you go so far. If you don't give God a praise up in here. Have a seat. Tell somebody it could have been me. Come on, have a seat. Tell somebody. Say it could have been me. Some of y'all should have said it should have been me. But God. He snatched me out. Come on, y'all. We got to get ready. Of a horrible pit. Yay! He Look at somebody and tell him, I'm still here. Still here. Out of all the things I've been through. Out of all that I've been through. I don't like the way some of y'all said that. You said that like you ain't been through nothing. But everybody that knows you've been through hell and high water. I need you to get ready to release a still hip praise. Still here. Have your hands and say, thank God I'm still here. Thank God I'm still here. Still saved. Still saved. Still sanctified. Still sanctified. Still got the Holy Ghost. Still got the Holy Ghost. Still dancing. Still praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Still want to be saved. Still desire to live holy. Lord, I want to be holy. Holy, holy, holy. Everybody have a seat. I'm sorry. Sit down. Holy, holy, holy. Have a seat. Sit down. Sit down. Come on, Daddy. Let's get our tithes and our offering ready. Let's get our tithes and offering ready. I'm sorry. When you've been with God a long time and you're still in love, have a seat. And it ain't me that keep me. Because there was a part of me that wanted to wander off, but he kept me. Everybody can't celebrate this keeping power. I'm sorry. It's exciting to me. Let's get our, let's get our times ready. Stop, stop. No, no. Stop. Don't do it. I'm serious, stop. We need to get out. Reverend, get the stage. Okay. I heard him say, before you give me your money, give me your praise. I heard him say, you owe me a praise.
let's go. Have a seat. Have a seat. For the rest of my life, I need you to make that commitment. Throw your head back and say, for the rest of my life, for the rest of my life. I'm yours. Please sit down. Let's get outside. Have a seat. I'm begging you. I don't take it for granted. Stop, please. So, can I get you to get your tithes and your offerings? We gotta go. Until I take my last breath. Get on the fire. Get on the fire. You excited about a house? I'm excited about being kept. For the rest of my life, I'm yours, Lord. Can we please? This is when the bride and the groom dance together. For the rest of my life, every day I get up, I'm yours. When I lay down, I'm still yours. For the rest of my life, go ahead and dance with the groom. You all got to praise. We got to go, y'all. This reception is going too long. Everybody that got 10 years of salvation under your belt, give God a praise. Everybody got 20 years, give God a praise. You got 30 years, give God a praise. You got 40 years. You were born in church. Give God a praise. It's a blessing to be a church, baby. I have no regrets. I have no regrets. Take them flags and go sit down. Sit down with the flags. <laughs> Every time they run with them flags, that means victory. Every time they run with that flag, that means you just won again. Stop. If you play it again, 
I'm a doc, your check. I bet you stop now. <laughs> Everybody sit down, please sit down. Yvette, I'm gonna bust you in the head with that tambourine. Oh. Everybody have a seat. We gotta go. It's enough service. The fact that he loved me like this. <laughs> that he come back to marry me again. <laughs> when he knows I've been unfaithful in some areas in my life. If you don't wave your hand and tell the Lord, thank you for loving me. We gotta go, y'all. Stop. Danny. Danny, you were with me yesterday. Danny, I'm tired. Let us stop you. Danny, you were with me yesterday. We traveled yesterday. I'm tired. Stop. Can we get our ties ready? Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. Get your ties ready. Listen to me, there are four seeds in the house, and it's your restoration seed. Look, to our visitors, I promise you, we're not normally here this long. Something happened? <laughs> I can't, I, this ain't, stop, no. Stop! Listen, so get your ties ready, and then there are four seeds, and everybody pray about which seed you're going to give. It's either 23, it's either 46, it's 69, or it's 92. What seed is this? This is for your restoration. Because he's about to restore unto you the years. And for some of y'all, I need your finances to be restored. It's, it's either 26, 46, 69, or 92. Out of those four, which are you going to sow? Your tithes is one thing, but this is your offering. This is your restoration seed. Come on, get your seat ready. If you want to text and give you text words, N-O-C-S-E to 91694. If you're on our app, you can give. If you're on our website, you can give. If you have cash or check, you can give. You just need an envelope. But everybody get a seat in your hand. Come on, get something in your hand. Come on, stand to your feet. I can't talk about his love and I go crazy. So this is what happened today. That he still wants to marry me. <laughs> In my mess up. Anybody else would have left me, but he comes back and picks me up. I said, come on, we're still doing this. Come on, get your seat ready. Online, to my online members. Those of you that are online out of state, I need you to continue to be faithful in your tithing. But which one of these seeds is God telling you to give? Is it 23, is it 46, 69, or 92? Get your seat ready, lift it up to the Lord, and repeat after me. I'm a tithe and a giver, and I am blessed beyond measure. I have more than enough. I'm living in my overflow. Come on, say this. I am living in Ephesians 3.20. How long are you going to live it for the rest of my life? To all the men, Wednesday, we're going to be in our fellowship area, men, at 6.30. I will be here. We will be here with our men's ministry. Don't forget, Tuesday's the day of prayer. New life. I want to celebrate me and Anna Hannah's anniversary with you. So stop in the lobby. Find out how to get your tickets. We're going to do life, and we're going to celebrate together. Consider yourself dismissed.